It is day one of the Sea Otter Classic here in California. It's one of the biggest bicycle expos in the world. There's demonstrations, there's racing, there's all sorts going on. Of course, we are here to check out all the brand new bike tech. And I hear there's lots of cool stuff here this year. So let's get going. Right, we're at the gate stand, checking out some of their belt-driven bikes, uh, like this Zeroed. Obviously, most of these bikes have to have either a gearbox or a rear hub gears, because you can't use them on your standard cassettes, obviously. But obviously, you're removing a lot of that weight, so now you, you haven't got a rear mech, you haven't got the cassette, uh, and that's going to the middle of the bike as well. So that sprung mass is increasing, it does help with your suspension. Also, I think this is uh, pretty interesting. They are offering a hundred thousand euros to the first winner for mountain bike downhill World Cup on a Gates uh, driven bike. So at the moment there's a zero and you've got the Gamax bike. Sam Blenkinsop is riding the zeros, but he'll have to step up and try and win that hundred thousand euros. Okay, this is an instinctive uh, brand frame, which I've not heard of. Apparently it's a boutique uh, manufacturer out of the Netherlands. This bike was actually designed as a chain driven bike first. So they've design their own tensioner for the belt system and also their own trigger shifter to work with that pinion gearbox. It's a very special bike over here. This is Braga Vestavix bike, the Scandinavian psychopath free rider. And this is the bike he did that jar drop on. It's a proper free ride bike. It's got the Bomber 58 uh, fork up front with the 40 mil stanchions, 27.5 wheels front and rear, and one hell of a shock bolt there as well. Raceface is showing off their new carbon chambering. I say carbon, it's actually made of three different materials. The inner is aluminium and then carbon on the bigger spider. And then obviously with the teeth profile, that is made from hardened steel. So super long uh, life on that. So it's to last five times longer than an aluminium equivalent. Obviously, uh, it's bonded together all these different materials and they've used ski technology. So on the edges of skis, they have a metal edge and that's how this uh, steel hardened steel is sort of bonded onto that carbon spider actually doesn't weigh uh, any less than a regular aluminium chain but lasts five times longer over at fox racing shocks they have some new gear that you may have seen on gma tech already but if you haven't i shall summarize this is their 32 which is 32 mil stanchion cross-country race fork Stepcast has been around for a little while now. You can see where they take away the material on that lower to save weight. But now there's also this pretty funky looking uh, generative designed uh, arch on the back of there. Overall, this fork is 100 uh, grams lighter than the previous model. That was already super light. There's also a new grip SL damper inside. There are updates to the 36 and the 38. New bushings on both for less friction. New damps as well as a Grip X on the 36 and over on the 30 is a Grip X2 with four-way adjustable pressure and they're all available in this lovely fancy gold as well. A limited edition for the 50th anniversary of Fox Racing Shocks. Pinarello, obviously a brand with a, a lot of road bike heritage, but they also support the Ineos team with riders like Pauline Fran Prevost and Tom Pidcock, who obviously races a mountain bike as well. Their hardtail is crazy looking. When was the last time you saw an asymmetric hardtail with those seat stays at different levels? And around the bottom bracket area, you've got an interesting frame design and that chain guard. It looks like it's almost bonded to the frame. This is the brand new Pinarello Dogma XE full suspension bike. Comes standard with 100mm fork and 90mm rear travel. Shares some of the same sort of designs as the hardtail as well with this kind of crazy looking down tube to uh, seat tube transition and that chain guide as well. You can run this bike with more travel, 120 up front, but you have to go to 100 in the rear. It's also got that remote lock out there. I'm guessing it's in the Tom Pidcock uh, replica colors with the rainbow stripes and the gold. Pretty special looking bike. This is a pretty cool pro bike. This is Dakota Norton's Mondraker Rays. Limited edition, of course, Stars and Stripes. One of three, it says, on the down tube. So this is a standard Rays, but this is in Dakota's dual slalom setup. So this is normally a 29er, but he's running 27.5 wheels in it. So lowers everything down, the BB included, obviously, for proper slalom racing. The dual slalom here at Sea Otter is a big deal. So uh, getting a bike set up, especially for that, is pretty cool. The legendary stack up front, you see all those spaces underneath the stem, plus a 50mm rise bar up front as well. A fixed seat post, of course, for Simon, you don't need a dropper. Yoshimura flat pedals and a small cassette on there as well. At the propane stand, they are showing off their current range of bikes, but inside this black box that is currently smoking, they are showing a brand new bike. But unfortunately, no cameras are allowed, Josh. So you're going to have to stay here whilst I, I go and take a look.
smoking. Very cool. Thank you very much. At Smith, they're showing off some fresh colours of their existing models, including some very fresh retro ones over there, which I love. But also, they have a brand new helmet that has launched today. This is the Smith Payroll. As you can see, it's a trail helmet, but it's got lower protection at the rear, so aimed at those more aggressive riders. Uh, also, e-bike certified as well. It's got MIPS in there. It's got that Coroy construction that you'll see on other Smith helmets, and it's got an Alec crash sensor in it as well. Crank Brothers well known for making their pedals for a long time. In the last few years, they've also started making shoes. They've always talked about how their shoes and pedals work as a system. And with that in mind, they've actually launched these new candy shoes to work with their candy pedals. And we're at the candy store. Obviously, this is more down the cross country and trail end of the market. Stiff soles uh, and lace closure. Looking at trail shoes, we have a mallet trail over there, obviously to go with their mallet clipless pedal, but also a stamp trail to go with their stamp flat pedals. And it's one of few flat pedal shoes to actually offer sort of boa and a Velcro strap to give a really secure fit for a flat pedal shoe. Privateer has shown off their Gen 2 bikes. You have the 141 and the 161, which you have over here, obviously different travels. Uh, all new design, really designed around this different kinematics of the bike, so super progressive. Uh, nice and supple in the start of that stroke and then ramps up obviously through the middle and then gives you a really harder bottom out, just, well, a softer transition into the bottom out, shall I say, so it ramps up right at the very end. Uh, external cable routing, obviously privateer bikes in the name, these are designed to be worked on by privateers of the race, so you can swap a cable super easy. Also a couple of flip chips, so up here you can swap between your wheel sizes, 27.5 or 29 on the rear, and you can stretch out or shorten the wheelbase depending on how you like the feel of the bike. All right, D3O is a material you may be aware of. It's kind of this super material that is used in a lot of pads particularly, that is nice and soft and pliable. Then when it gets hit, so in impact, it goes hard straight away. So great for pads, but at the ODI stand, they have the first ever set of grips using their special D3O grip compound. So nice and pliable, super soft, really cushioned, nice contours as well to fit your fingers. We are one components are showing off a prototype downhill bike, as you can see. We've got Dustin Adams, the founder here, who's talked me through some of the features. So basically using their arrival, and they've kind of cut it in half. And at the moment, there's bonded uh, mounts for the shock. So why have you done that, Dustin? Uh, it's given us the best ability at the lowest cost to really fine tune and find the best kinematic values that we want when we go to production. Uh, it gives us almost infinite uh, adjustment and a big range uh, to try out different kinematic values, different leverage ratios, different sag points, uh, bottom bracket heights, uh, pretty much anything you would want to change in the rear end of the bike for suspension, uh, this will allow us to do that. So it's a, it's a great platform to start with. Amazing, super interesting. And you've got a World Cup race team as well, Mark Wallace this year, so we'll look forward to seeing him at Fort William on this bike. Yeah, it'd be great. Uh, I hope they do well and I uh, look forward to seeing the bike uh, at the races. It's going to be really exciting for us. All right, over at SRAM, uh, we're going to take a look at their new kit. Actually, they've got quite a few things here. The Maven brake has been out for a, a little while now, but it's nice to see it on a very nice looking Trek session. Got those cool sort of red and silvery anodized calipers, which do look massive still. And they've obviously gone to that stealth lever as well, where the, the hose comes out quite near the bar. Super neat looking, but we shall take a look at some of their newer kit. Now we have a Santa Cruz Blur covered in gadgets, including that new SID flight attendant with that SID Lux shock. You can see the sort of units here holding the batteries. I don't know if you saw that stat that Nino Schurter sure said that it worked thousands of times in a cross country race to stiffen up and lock out suspension all completely automatically if you want it to be. Uh, also, you've got a quark power meter on there. You've got obviously all the Axis kit. Uh, 160mm. Uh, Brake discs look kind of small to me, to be fair, but obviously it's a cross-country bike. And a nice little touch. There's actually some road bar tape up in the middle of the bars for getting aero. And actually, I think we have some little trigger shifters there to do your gears as well. Very trick. There's a very nice canyon sender over here in that sort of Troy Lee collab paint job pink. But I'm at this end because we talk about 
these two new forks at the more budget end of scale, really interesting, I think. You've got the new RockShox Silo, which is a 140 to 160 fork. It's $535, something like that, definitely sub 600. And over here, you've got the bigger fork at the RockShox domain, so that's a 150 to 180, around that same price as well. Both forks have that RC three position damper and are available in both 27.5 and 29. So the specialized downhill bike has broken cover, sort of. We've seen uh, Loic Bruni and Finals riding this bike all last year, sort of covered up, but now actually we can see what's going on with this linkage. And it is crazy, the details, we look close. There's this kind of dog bone thing under here that is completely adjustable. Uh, this Olin shock drives this linkage looks like there's a sort of concentric bottom bracket in there so you can determine where that bb sits and change the geometry obviously it's carbon tubed and sort of 3d printed lugs and that's about all i know it's mixed wheel size i still cannot get any information out of the guys who are specialized no one wants to tell me anything about it uh, but it's a very cool thing to have a look at part tool has shown off their massive range of tools including this brand new brk1 it actually stands for a uh, big rolling kit. I like it, it's simple, and it is what dreams are made of. A hundred piece professional grade tool kit, and I'd like to take one home if I could. Also out front, they're showing off uh, a really cool electric stand, and they have a full range of tools for anyone to show up and fix their bikes. And I can see a couple of people taking full advantage of that at the moment. All right, we've got a, a Nino Schurter replica Scott Spark, some very cool details. It's actually got some nice synchro sparks in here. We've got those Silverado wheels, one piece carbon wheels. It's crazy how the hub kind of molds into the spoke and then into the rim. Also synchro's carbon, one piece bar and stem. Some amazing uh, paint on this, kind of speckly, really subtle kind of speckly paint on there. Plus you've got uh, Nino's nine world championship wins. I think this is actually one of Nino's spare frames that's been built up as a replica. Massive chain ring, that's a 38. All right, day one at CLT Classic in the books. Jump into the comments if there's something you think I've missed. But actually, of course, I'll be back with loads more tomorrow. It feels like we've barely scratched the surface. It's a very good year for CLT Classic. So stay tuned for more bike tech tomorrow.